So I've just had my seed delivery. So I'm going to take you through what seeds I use, when I feed them, and the properties of those specific seeds. So let's get right to it. Welcome back to OC Avery. Today in this video I want to be teaching you all about the seeds we use in the hobby for the four main seasons which, uh, which we uh, go through and take the birds through. So that first season um, to start with is the conditioning. So this is when we condition the birds and build up the, uh, the, the energy stores and get them into breeding condition ready for reproduction in the breeding season. Then we actually have re the reproduction of the birds. So we change the, um, the diet and the seeds quite, um, quite differently just to make sure that we're hitting all those key points for not only for raising the young but keeping the adults in good condition, uh, ready to carry on having a couple of rounds. Then we come to the molt and we change the seeds. So like now all the birds are on a different seed than when I had them. Um, in the breeding season. Um, so this is to really get the birds we're having high protein, building those feathers nice and strong, um, plenty of vitamins uh, going into them really, just to keep them up and uh, keep them happy, keep them healthy. Um, but also the oils and the seeds um, that really do finish off the uh, plumage, but also give them that waterproof uh, property. And then we have the fourth, which is um, the rest of the birds. So just resting the birds throughout the winter and also exhibiting the birds. So we do change the seeds um, quite differently there as well to make sure that we have the birds looking in their absolute prime and their absolute best, ready for those shows, but also giving the birds plenty of energy and fat stores, ready to get them through the winter with as uh, few fatalities as possible. Um, so we're going to start off conditioning. Uh, so let's get to that. So we start off with canary seed. So canary seed should constitute roughly 70% of the basic diet of a canary or small finch. This seed is high in starches, low in fat at 5% and a 12% protein content. Good seeds do germinate under favourable conditions. Seeds should always be kept dust free and shiny. So I use this as the base of most of my finches diets. Um, not only through conditioning but also the breeding season and malt so I always try to make sure that canary seed is always part of my birds diet but throughout their whole life throughout the four seasons then we look at rapeseed so this should constitute up to roughly 20 to 30 percent of the basic maintenance diet along with the canary seed so i do find that mixing these two seeds together uh, ultimately does give some great results and um, just for keeping the birds healthy and happy and um, it has a 45 percent fat content and a 20 percent protein content so this is a, a very very um good seed and i do try and mix um small amounts of rapeseed in throughout the four seasons but especially during conditioning and breeding season i find rapeseed is definitely uh, something you should be giving the birds uh, due to that high protein content which is absolutely fantastic um, for feeding the young um, but obviously the fat content we do need to make sure that while we do feed that it is important that you keep your birds fit um, as a 45% fat content is quite high and we don't want the adult birds getting fit unfit during the breeding season we then come to oats also known as groats so most native finches and canaries absolutely love these seeds. Um, it's 12% protein and 4% fat, high in fibre and a good seed to offer when soaked. Um, so I would definitely recommend that you have some oats um, in your seed mix, especially throughout the breeding season. Once again, 12% protein. But also, I would definitely say, um, given this in the... Um, 
probably the uh, conditioning sort of stage and when you're trying to get the birds fit is because it's only 4% fat but 12% protein. So definitely do offer groats um, or oats, if you, whatever you want to call it, um, when you're conditioning your birds. So then we have hemp seed. So this is a really good seed for bringing natives and canaries into breeding condition, but also through malt. Uh, so it's 30% fat and 20% protein. All the birds do love it, definitely. Um, I can say that it's probably a favourite of most of my birds in here, hemp seed. And um, they will not let it go until they've cracked it. And... Um, yeah, because it is quite a hard, uh, quite a hard seed, but the birds really do enjoy um, hemp seed. So do make sure that that is in the diet of the birds um, through conditioning, but also the malt. So then we have linseed, also known as flags. Because of its high fat content at 30%, protein at 20%, and huge amounts of omega-3, it is used during the molt to give emerging feathers flexibility and luster. So I would absolutely 100% recommend that if you plan to exhibit your birds, um, really from the molt at the start, you do want to offer linseed, um, as it is an absolutely fantastic thing. Um, we do, I mean, I've got birds on it now and it really does give them that waterproof coating on the feathers, um, which is great for them. Uh, when they're obviously having a bath, if there's birds outside, so they do have that sort of oily layer over them to keep them protected from the, the elements. Um, it helps keep them warm, uh, have, also having that oily layer and really it just gives them an overall gloss, which you really do want to be seeing in shows um, on the show birds. So absolutely make sure that you do offer linseed throughout the molt and also um I, I would say give that in a, a conditioning mix as well not not too high um not too high amounts of that in your conditioning mix but um, overall i'd say that's a this is a really good seed so do make sure to use that we then have poppy seed also known as blue moor so this is by far one of the best seeds and must be offered with egg food during the breeding season. It has a 50% fat content and 21% protein. So really do make sure to offer this to your birds um, through breeding season. Um, I do personally give this mixed in with all the egg food, um, but also I would this, this uh, really does have some amazing medicinal properties. And um, I have brought birds back from almost, you know, almost lifeless and barely breathing, really struggling and not doing well. I've given them blue moor, dip the beak in water and give it them again. Just make sure it gets some down and, and by the morning they've seemed a completely different bird up on the perches singing and bright. So absolutely you do need blue moor. Um, I do buy this separate, so I do buy it from Stafford, about a kilo is about £4.50 um, and that is usually something that I use just mainly as a, um, as a mix to put in the egg food and also offer it alone um, and then there is a low percentages of blue more in most conditioning mixes. So then we have Niger or thistle seed. So it is hard to get um, high quality thistle seed um, because it's high fat content at 40% and high protein at 25%. It is a must for the malt and bringing birds into breeding condition. So do offer niger seed slash thistle seed um, to your birds as they are molting, but also when bringing them into breeding condition. Now, I would say that uh, if there was to be a favourite, uh, if, if there was a bird that favours this most, it would have to be the goldfinch. Um, I, I give this also in my feeders outside at home um, to watch the wild birds, and I find that goldfinches do go for this every time without fail. Um, I don't ha currently have any goldfinches, but my siskins absolutely love niger seed, but so do the red poles. Um, something I do like to offer as a bit of an enrichment for the birds is actually getting pine cones and dipping them um, in a bag of niger seed to get the niger, the tiny little niger seeds into the cracks 
um, and putting them in for the Red Poles and the Siskins and they absolutely love to play about with those and um, pull the Niger seeds out of them. Um, but also it is something the crossbills I do find like, however um, the, the seeds are quite small so I wouldn't say a crossbill would suit living on that um, alone, although no birds would really. Then a very easy seed to come across is the sunflower seed. So this can be easily bought from most um, pet shops where you can buy bird, wild bird seed, but also captive bird seed. Um, even Poundland or Pound Shop or uh, maybe it's Euro Shop or something uh, like that. It's usually very cheap and quite easy to get hold of. Um, it's completely additive free and produced from 100% natural ingredients to maintain 99.9% .9 purity. Um, they do possess a lot of essential nutrients that birds need um, and sunflower hearts contain fibre, vitamin B, amino acids, minerals such as iron, magnesium, selenium and zinc. So sunflower seeds are an absolute um, lifesaver really. The high fat content does uh, worlds of good for a lot of the birds and I always offer this through the molt, uh, gradually increasing through the molt and then when we're resting the birds and we're taking the birds to exhibition, sunflower hearts are the way to go. Um, keeping those uh, high energy stores and high fat stores on the birds, keeping them warm but also having that energy um, just to keep them the, them active through the winter, keep them warm and uh, we should really be good from there um, and I would say that you should probably keep this out um, of the breeding season and, the con and when conditioning the birds as it is quite high in fat um, but small quantities are absolutely great for the birds um, and I do make this actually something uh, which I give my crossbills but I don't give them the hearts I actually give them the whole sunflower seed as they it does they do really enjoy to hold those seeds and crack them open and chew them and it's just a, a really an enrichment and just activity for them to do and they do enjoy spending the time doing that um, you obviously can get different sizes of the seeds so you can get really small ones um, but really if you're feeding these to anything other than a crossbill or a hawfinch you do want the hearts and not the whole seeds now, as an overall seed mix, I like to give them something really what should be referred to as a supreme mix. And this is through the breeding season and the molt. Uh, so this contains maintenance seeds, uh, plus small quantities of niger, thistle, oat, linseed, hemp, and sesame. Uh, this is a base for many bird um, specific mixes. Um, so for example, uh, a bullfinch mix would contain this and perhaps dried uh, berries such as rowan berry and uh, maybe even small quantities of peanut. If we then look at a crossbill mix, we see a lot of larger seeds, uh, dried fruits in there such as maybe a dried banana, we have dried um, chilies, uh, occasionally dried strawberries and berries and they, they absolutely love that. Um, so do uh, really look at making sure that your mixes do contain those um, those seeds, which, which is again niger, thistle, oats, linseed, hemp and sesame. So now I've given you a run through all of the seeds and the properties of those individual seeds. I want to show you um, what I buy and what I feed. So currently I'm feeding this mix here. So this is more of a base canary mix so in there we have we have rapeseed we have linseed we have a few um sort of corn seeds in there a few grass seeds um there's a few little bits of more uh, there's a few little bits of niger and um, also bits of millet and things like that um, so this really is just a base mix. I don't give this um, just individually really. Um, I do ever, so every so often top up feeders with that. Um, but we, I do try and make sure that we do keep a good mix. Um, so overall that is uh, what I would call the supreme mix, which is the base mix. Um, everything I give the birds. Um, so there isn't actually a high um, a high concentration of millet in this there are just a few millet seeds 
um, which is good because millet isn't uh, isn't really brilliant um, for the birds. It's just high in fat and oils, um, which isn't great for the birds really to be giving them full time. So it does have small quantities of that, but overall it's okay. We then um, oh that that is the base mix for everything. Um, we then come to what I give the crossbills. So you might be wondering really is what I've just said about millet. Well, this is actually the mix for the crossbills. So this is actually a parakeet mix made design made and designed for cockatiels, um, budgies, and maybe ringnecks, connors, and and other sort of mid-sized parrot species and parakeet species. Um, but I do give this the crossbills as they absolutely love it. So as you can see here, we have a quite fairly large sunflower seed uh, compared to some of the, the much smaller sunflower seeds like that. Uh, the crossbills do love to chew on these, open them up and get into the heart of them. Um, however, it does have a high um, sort of quantity of millet, if you can see. So there are a few sunflower hearts in there, but there's also red and yellow millet in there, among a few other seeds such as hemp. Um, so I don't give that the crossbills alone, as that wouldn't be good for them, um, as it really it wouldn't do anything other than just maintain them. Um, it wouldn't get them in breeding condition really. Um, so it is important that we do offer other seeds in there as well, which is why I mix this uh, this parakeet mix with the supreme mix for the crossbills um, but I also actually do mix it with other things such as dried peas um, or the dried fruits and things like that so uh, this is the linseed so I, I do buy quite large bags of linseed I usually buy five kilos I've probably got I don't know two and a half kilos of that left and another five kilo bag in my storage um, so I give this to the birds quite in, in quite high quantities, uh, especially when they're molting, to give them that sort of sheen uh, and gloss over the feathers, uh, keeping them waterproof. But do give it for them a bit through the breeding season, just to make sure that they've got all of that uh, gloss on the feathers and all those oils are there. Um, but obviously it is quite high in fat, so we've got to make sure that it doesn't get the birds unfit. So something I would say is when you are um, conditioning the siskins and breeding siskins so these guys here do not offer them this and do not offer them niger in large quantities as siskins love oily seeds and ultimately will get really quite unfit and um, which really does make me think that I, I had a bit of a miracle with the siskin mules um, we've got the young hen here and we have the young siskin mule cut down there because um, I was giving them the, the siskin cock larger quantities than I should have been giving him uh, which made me believe that he wasn't he wasn't fit enough to do the job but thankfully um, I was lucky enough that we got the two mules out of there and uh, he did do his job quite well so he's up there now with the other cock bird um, I did offer the other cock bird that as well um, he seemed happy enough and we've got the, t the four young birds there from that um, this is also something I offer in the malt, uh, which is really where I supplement the linseed. Um, it's a mix of egg food, uh, niger seed and linseed. So that is quite a mix right there. And I give that to every single bird in here. Uh, the egg food obviously high in protein and just keeping the birds um, happy really. I find that they absolutely love egg food. Uh, and that's just the basic like dry biscuit sort of mix. Um, the linseed obviously for the gloss like we spoke about and then the niger thistle seed um, which they, they really do enjoy and it's also quite good for the colour of the birds it, I find that it really brings the colour out much better um, having niger seed in there so that is mainly for the small finches which is in this shed and the canaries um, with the green finches for example the bull finches I don't offer them this because it's a lot of smaller seeds that I've found that they don't like as much. Um, but I do I do give them the option. I've just found that personally, they haven't been that bothered about it. Um, Niger seed, so we just come to that. So that 
just just a fine seed that's from wilco that was only a pound um, and you get a kilo of niger and um, so i do fill up the wild bird seeds but wild bird feeders with a different bag uh, but this is what i do supplement to the small finches so obviously as you can see here that is quite a small fine seed um, and the siskins and the red poles absolutely love the niger so i've put some in here now and just leave the birds actually just to pick at it they'll, they'll love to go through there and find all the little seeds we then have uh, my conditioning mix so i don't offer this until roughly about january february building those stores up um, and building the birds up ready for breeding from sort of april time um, obviously it does depend on when the birds breed um, so with the crossbills i am starting to offer this now um, although it is finer seeds the crossbills are usually quite happy picking at it so i do put it in pine cones for them to work at and uh, ultimately chew through uh, to get the, to the little seeds in the center um, so this is a mix of hemp, uh, a little bit of more, we have rapeseed in here and we have linseed. Um, so this is quite a basic mix, really only four or five seeds in that. So let you just have another look. Um, so I bought a 10 kilo bag of this for only £15 pounds, um, from my local feed store, which I will leave a link to in the description. Um, they're called BJF Feeds. Uh, they're in Sheffield, uh, in a little village called Wales in Sheffield. Um, they supply me with 90% of my seeds. I do order some from eBay, so I have um, bought some of this off eBay. Not much difference in it, to be honest. Um, I just wanted to see uh, what, what I might be able to get off of by another place, but uh, I, I can't really beat this from BJF. Um, I do also buy from them my germination seed. Um, so this is something that I only offer in the breeding season and to build up to the breeding season when conditioning the birds. As uh, I found the young birds obviously absolutely love to chew um, and eat these the little sprouted seeds, but it's also great for the adults. Um, so that is quite a different mix uh, with seeds that we don't usually have. So a seed I haven't mentioned in there, which I'm not 100% sure what it is. It's this um, sort of little little green seed right there. Um, and I'm not 100% sure what that is actually, but I found that they sprout really well. Um, but in there we're seeing a, a, quite a mix of other seeds. So if you buy a germination seed, uh, it will consist of mainly all of these seeds. So quite a different uh, load here with some bigger seeds. Um, we also have some rapeseed in there, grass seed, uh, bits of niger. Uh, no hemp really in here. It doesn't sprout great. Uh, and also some millet. So that's something I only offer in green season sprouted. I do give a little bit to the crossbills just as a bit of a, an extra pick up for them. They always enjoy a good seed mix. Um, so there you are, that is the seed mixes and the diet of all of the birds that I keep. Um, so those being red poles, siskins, canaries, mules, uh, crossbills, bullfinches and greenfinches. So that covers the whole shed um, and all the flights. The birds love those seeds. Um, and they, they do the job, they keep the birds in good condition, they keep the birds happy, they raise young on them as well as egg food, so I really can't complain. Now, um, I also had this question by a few viewers, um, is how often do I uh, give the birds sort of um, just, just vegetables really? So here we have peas, so these, um, I, I buy frozen peas for the birds, they're only about 50p for a kilo, a kilo of frozen peas. So never really, uh, not a massive expense. Um, I also buy them frozen sweet corn, uh, spinach, which um, is great for them, um, and broccoli. So they're the four main things I give the birds and um, I do mix peas sweet and sweet corn into the egg food mixers. Um, so, on how often do I give them peas? I give them peas um, or the vegetables 
about three times a week because what you don't want to be doing is giving the birds this. They fill themselves up on uh, that and aren't taking those seeds which you really do need them to take on. Um, as I found that, especially the captive birds, they are, they're always more than um, happy to be eating vegetables rather than the seeds they should be eating. Um, a lot of the time that is anyway. Um, so in the breeding season, I try and offer this um, almost daily to the birds which are the, the breeding um, and they've got the young. Uh, as I do find that they feed the young on this and the young like, develop uh, prolifically um, when feeding them um, the peas. Um, but also spinach, so peas do go sour in the sun. Um, so I would say that if you're going to feed peas, you do need to make sure it's early in the morning and wherever they are, they're out of the sun because they do go sour. Um, however, spinach is brilliant. Um, now it is quite high in iron spinach, so it's something that you don't want to over overdo really. So what I'm, I, I would suggest really is offer them uh, spinach in the morning and then maybe mid afternoon if you if you can or in the evening before it goes dark um, is offering peas just to give the young a final feed for the night uh, and let the young birds digest that ready for the morning to get on the spinach and then the egg food so i'm now going to give all of the birds some peas um, and they do really enjoy this and it's great for them in the malt uh, broccoli is absolutely fantastic they all have um, a lot of vitamins in them and um, minerals and ju just the birds really do enjoy them so please do make sure that you give your birds vegetables as well now with feeding peas and any vegetables it is important that you do keep them off the floor um, as you don't want contamination from feces uh, but also just keep them separate from the sea uh, so i offer them in these little uh, sort of drawers and um, they are designed actually to fit like that on the door um, and then it's just a very easy remove but I do prefer just to put them straight in in the event that if a bird was to jump on that and that lift too high a bird could get out and I don't want that happening so just put in a few peas in there now in here we're feeding eight young red poles um, all quite hungry as well because the babies and young birds and um, so I give them uh, two of them but half full so that they do share um, as I've found that birds are very greedy when it comes to this sort of thing so there you are that's that's the young the young uh, red poles done we have the adult um, over year females and all uh, red poles now but also um, the young siskin sorry the hen siskin so that's for them uh, it is important you don't give them out too many so i do try to make sure that whatever i give them is gone within a f probably an hour um, then we just have the the uh, red pole corks we have the siskin corks so a few peas in there not too many just for the uh the siskin corks there we have the young siskins so once again off them up there and then I will put some in for the mules as well and feed the other shed. Now then we come to this week's eye catcher which is this young lesser red pole. Now you might be wondering um, as to why, because we don't actually see um, some really decent markings on the flanks. We obviously do have some, um, but we haven't got the the real defined streaks. Um, but the reason being is actually this bird is much lighter than any of the other red poles in comparison, um, which leads me to be, to think that. Um, somewhere along the ancestry um, of this bird was a mealy red poll um, which has actually randomly came out um, to into its plumage to show off um, which is much lighter bird now to put that into perspective for you if i compare this bird at the bottom with the bird at the top you can clearly see um, a much darker plumage um, on the bird at the top um, 
which is a completely normal lesser red poll. So uh, it does re leave me to believe that this bird has some mealy red poll in its ancestry, um, which may be actually from um, the original lesser red poles which were caught when it was legal and which have been bred in, in now captive birds, or potentially um, a mealy has been uh, purposefully bred into it um, in order to increase the size of the lessers. So if we just um, take a look there, you can see this bird at the top is much darker and has the the, the lines and um, really it's just overall a better lesser red pole, whereas this just has the mealy red pole look. Um, so this isn't something that um, I would really recommend you do is actually breeding mealy into lesser lines as that is definitely not great. However, it is something that caught my eye, which I wanted to point out to um, you as my viewers. Um, and just really advise you against it as um, crossing the mealy red pole with the lesser red pole creates fertile birds. Uh, which are also known as half chance. So please do not cross the birds um, and leave them as a pure species. But I wanted to point this out to you today to make sure that um, I could really show you what happens. Now I don't have a special mention this week, but please, if you haven't seen the last video, you really do need to go back and see that um, as I do announce the competition, the online exhibition. Um, so I will be doing a specific video on all of the information that you need to know for that competition. So if you haven't already, please do join the Natives in Norwich forum uh, or group on Facebook and um, you'll see all of the online exhibition information there and I will do a video on that very soon as well as a few more very exciting videos for you guys. Um, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. I did try and make it as informative as possible um, with what you want to feed and when uh, as well as all the different sort of properties of the seeds that we use um, and when they should be supplemented. Um, so there you are. So please uh, do subscribe if you're new. Only 20% of you are actually subscribed who watch my videos. So please hit that subscribe button. Um, it really does mean a lot to see uh, that grow and just shows me that you guys really do want to keep watching my videos. You do enjoy them and I should carry on doing this. Um, now as well, please leave a like if you enjoyed the video and if you didn't like the video, leave a dislike and please put in the comments as to why you didn't. Uh, as I do always, try and make sure that I can improve my, con my content for you guys as my audience. Um, so there you are. If you haven't already, please do share the video as well as it is a, it is a growing channel now. So I'm really pleased um, to see the growing numbers. So it is really, uh, really encouraging. So please do share the channel with all of your friends uh, who might be in the same hobby. And uh, let's see this grow together and uh, really become one of the top sources on YouTube for everything you need to know about the bird hobby. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.